please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Spider-Man 2 movie thoughts. It seems like near the end of the film, Peter just kind of tires of the whole, you know, hidden identity kind of thing. You know, I mean, one thing is that, you know, his mask gets like scorched a little bit on top of the train, then he throws it off and Somehow it ends up in the hands of the kid on the train, even though it looks like he threw it, you know, away from the train. Whatever. You know, that's one thing. And, you know, the New Yorkers actually claim that they will not try to use it to extort him, which is, is it's a sweet thought. It's, it's really very, very dear. It's, yeah. And... You know, the, the, the notion, I mean, that, that New Yorkers would, would respond in that way, in that situation. And then afterwards, you know, and, and then, you know, Harry pulls the mask off, he puts it back on, then he gets to, you know, uh, Dr. Octopus, and, you know, he's punching him, then he pulls it off, just, you know, oh, hey, you know, by the way, we know each other, and then he goes back to MJ without having put it back on, just like, yeah, okay, uh, hey, it's, that's me. Yeah. Uh, I quite like that, you know, that there is sort of a poetic self-sacrificing quality to Octopus's death, that he, yeah, basically, you know, goes... You know, it, it is his creation, and it is, excuse me, it threatens to kill half the city. And he, you know, he, he knows that the only way to stop it is to make sure that it, you know, goes down to the river, and so he, you know, pulls it down with him. You know, to, yeah, basically, something like that. And, yeah, it's, it's a nice, good, you know... It's nice with a complex villain, you know, I, I'd say the first one tried to do that with Gobby, but it just didn't quite work, I'd say. The, I, I do feel a little bad for, you know, Jameson's son, you know, John, I think. It's just, he's, he's in the movie just so that, she, you know, MJ could be marrying someone who isn't Peter. And then, you know, stand him up at the wedding. It's just kind of, yeah. He, he literally is only there to be stood up, you know. And for her to try to reenact the, you know, upside down Spider-Man kiss from the first one. And, yeah, and then, then she, you know... I don't know, I guess she, you know, when she finds that John doesn't kiss quite as well as Spider-Man, I guess she figures she's going to try to find out who Spider-Man is and go and get, you know, become Mrs. Spider-Man. I mean, she, she's really lucky that it happened to be the person who she was already in love with. You know, it would have kind of sucked for her if it had been, a, or not to mention him. Really, was she just gonna go like around, you know, asking people, you know, could you could you bend your head, you know, back over? You seem to be the right height. Let me try to kiss you. No, that's not it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know exactly what what she was planning. Again, very very lucky that Peter just kind of decided. You know what? I want fresh air on my face. I don't want to wear the mask tonight. I quite like May. That that she has, you know. I mean, one thing is to, to have her be a hostage of Octavius, but that she actually also gets to make an impact in the fight scene. And just the way she, 
I mean, she she's. I don't want to use the word caricature, but she is she is a somewhat. In in part parts of this movie, at least, she is a fairly. Limited character, I suppose you could say. She she has a very strong moral sense, and that kind of just got that. That's really what guides all her actions. She isn't, you know, she she's almost a joke character in those parts. You know, in in the whole bank scene, but just you know, she she sees what's his name, Joel something, Joel McHale. She sees Joel McHale you know, grab one of the, I don't know, gold doubloons. It, it looked a little weird for a gold coin, but whatever. You know, it's a comic book. And she's like, no, you don't do that. That's that's wrong, you know. It's, it's sure, it, it, it might not get spotted, but that's just, that's not nice, you know. And it's not that, you know, when, when she's behind Octavius, it's not the fact that Octavius is going to trying to stab Spider-Man, it's that he's trying to be covert about it, you know, it's that he's trying to lure Spider-Man there so he can stab him with this sort of hidden... What was that needle for, by the way? It, it, I mean, just... I don't personally want to be injected by this, you know, metal arm. Was, was it to, to inject something into the, you know, big sun in the palm of my hands kind of thing? Yeah, anyway, you know, it's, it's that he's trying to hide it, and she's like, oh, dude, no, that's, that's wrong, you, you don't do that, and, you know, she knocks him out, you know, I've, I've heard some people complain about, like, oh, it's, you know, it's an old lady using her umbrella to end the fight, you know, he kind of wasn't expecting it, I, I think it works, you know, with Spider-Man, he expected to be punched, but, you know, he didn't expect the hostage to be acting up. I think these sort of philosophy stuff about, you know, we need heroes that may espouses is really good. You know, I, I think that it's good the way that, you know, Peter gets pulled back into... <laughs> they keep pulling me back in. That, that he gets encouraged to, to return to the way of the spider. It's a sacred code. That, yeah, by, by this talk about how we need people to look up to, you know, it's... And, and that really is kind of the, the... I don't know, maybe, maybe not specifically Marvel, but at least the, 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 the superhero medium... So the superhero comics as as a whole as as a genre is about you know a lot of the time largely about you know it's it's good to have you know icons to point to and say you know th that's what I want to be you know that's you know that's what I would aspire to and I think actually Usually I can't stand kids in movies, but in this film, I can't point to one kid that I don't like, or, or where the moment with that kid I, I don't like. I don't know, it's just... Maybe I'm going soft. I don't know, but, but yeah, just the, you know... I'll try to take them chronologically. You've got the kids that Spider-Man saves, which... I don't know, supposedly makes him be late, but really, he was, you know, he was going to be late. Anyway, yeah, you know, he, he saves these little kids, you know, who are running into the street, and he's like, remember, don't play in the street, you know, just stay out of the street. And they just simultaneously, yes, Mr. Spider-Man, you know, it's just, it's, it's perfect. It's this kind of, you know little heroic moment where he he saves these two kids and then you know reminds them it's it's just a very classic superhero kind of thing you know saving children and then telling them be careful you know and without it being in a really preachy or you know stern kind of manner you know then you've got the the one where he you know that when, when he's he gets there late for the Mary, Mary Jane's play, you know, the importance of being earnest, a very clever choice there. 
the I also quite like the the image when when he opens the wardrobe. I mean, it's it's very impractical. It's a bad decision to actually have the suit hang there in case you know someone comes kind of saying, "Oh, how many suits do we have?" Oh, what? Yeah, I don't know. If people actually do that, but you get my point. But but that you have the the, the suit there next to. Peter Parker clothes, you know. Anyway, when he is late for the MJ play, you know, he's he's like driving the scooter, and suddenly the you know the car with the criminals comes up behind him, actually runs over the scooter. He just jumps out of the way, you know, he jumps up and then lands, and then there's like a kid, like, whoa, how'd you do that? Ah, uh, you know, rest, exercise, eat your green vegetables, and the kid's like, that's what my mama told me. But I never believed her. You know, this, I don't know, it's just, it's perfect. I, I, I really love that moment. And, you know, you've got the kid in the, the subway, you know, here, they have the mask back, and the, the kid, actually, I skipped the, the, the kid that helps May move, you know, also with, I, I hope Spider-Man comes back, you know, tell him to come back, you know, that, that kind of thing. It just, it works, you know. Again, you have that stuff of, you know, people who we look up to. I also feel that the decision to of, of his to stop being Spider-Man for a while also makes sense. It doesn't feel that selfish when he's doing it. It kind of gets to feel selfish. He gets to feel bad. But the film, I mean, making a good big film is a lot about manipulating emotions. You know, it's about making the audience feel a certain way at a certain time. Because if you stop to think about, if if you stop at that point and think. He can't do that. A lot of people will, you know, not be safe, and you know, then the film has kind of failed. The film is not properly distracting you because you're not supposed to think about that part yet. You know, you're supposed to go with him and you know, enjoy this sort of idea of being free from this horrible burden, and you know, later comes the responsibility. You know, it it reaffirms that he needs to do this. That it's important and right for him to do this. So, yeah, you know, you have this, you know, the, the, uh, the doctor, I guess, you know, talking about maybe you shouldn't be Spider-Man, you know, maybe that's why you can't. You know, I, I do think that it would have been good if the film had been more consistent with, you know, when he isn't confident in it or when he feels bad about it, he can't use the powers. I mean, like, near the end, when MJ gets kidnapped, and he gets off back out of the you know the, the rubble, and you know then he can use his powers. That makes sense. But earlier than that, you know he still at times excuse me got his powers back, and it didn't. Yeah, it it seemed kind of random. You know. I like that. You know the that that with Mary Jane discovering Peter Parker's real identity, yeah, Spider Man's identity, that she you know gets sort of let in on this. You know, this is why I have to make that choice. I can't be with you because you won't be safe. I'm Spider Man, and people attack. You know, or people. Villains attack the people who are close to me, Spider-Man, and, you know, she, she sort of understands, but she accepts it, you know, and, yeah, that's, it's a really nice way of, and, and just furthering their relationship, it's, you know, that, that's something that the film does really well, I'd say, that at, at the beginning of the film, it kind of sets up these relationships and these situations, and then by the end of it, it has kind of, you know, it, it has brought them further, and although the Osborne curse has not, is, is not completed by the end of the film, you don't feel like you've been you know, I don't know, tricked or that you hadn't, that you didn't get everything you needed to because that is furthered. By the end of the film, Harry knows that Peter is Spider-Man and he has to deal with my best friend killed my father. And, that's what he thinks, you know, 
and he finds out that his father was the you know the, the goblin. These two things, you know, he now has to has to deal with. And again, you, you could not have done all this in one film. I think the film really balances balances it really well. That you know, over the course of it, he becomes you know, Oscorp, you know, becomes ruined because they meddle in you know alternate energy sources. You know, I don't know. Maybe the film was you know, partially written by a, an oil tycoon or something. It, it seems. Somewhat strange that it's, you know, all that against the anyway. The but but yes, and the the scene of you know Spider-Man getting tied up and you know unmasked before Harry. I'm really impressed with Doc Doc Ock's ability to sneak away this this large man with four mechanical arms who usually makes a lot of noise when he moves so somebody just sneaks away in a, a second or two that just yeah it, interesting that but anyway it's you know it's it's a good reveal and you really feel like you know it, it complicates matters for Harry and then you know Peter points out there are bigger things going on here than you or me, you and me. You know, it's, you know, I have to go save half the city. Can we put our little personal drama on hold, please? You know, and... Yes, we do get more of the Osborne in the third film, but... I like how they approach the look of Doc Ock. I don't think that the green spandex of the comics would quite have worked. So yeah, you know, he has the he's got the, the trench coat and they do give him the, the arms and the arms look great. And I really like the way they visualize how he moves around that the arms help him climb buildings, and sometimes he uses them, you know, to, I don't know, rest his feet, I guess, so, so that he doesn't have to walk. You know, it's very cool. Very, you know, visually appealing. And they did somewhat have their, you know, they, they basically did have to come up with that. You know, in the, in the comics, it's all still frames, you know, you, you piece together in your mind how you know, how, how he moves around, but, yeah. I think this continues to have some, I don't know, I guess problems with the, the spider sense, you know, that he, I don't know, I, actually, it's, it's better in this, but it's still just, yeah, I, th I think if there was a sound to it, or like maybe a tint to the, the, footage or something where you could just see, ah, that's the spider sense, but yeah. I suppose that's more or less it. Ah, actually, the, the Doc Ock motivation. I quite like how, like I said in the review, it's much more clear and it makes much more sense than Gobby. Gobby, halfway through the first film, just ran out of stuff to do, and from there on out, it didn't really make sense. I'm, I'm not spoiling Spider-Man, don't worry, not in this video. And in this, I mean, right from the start, he's, he's convinced that he did it right with with the you know it's it's the calculations did I miscalculate and you know you, you gotta love Peter's you know priorities with you know he's he's sitting there you know going about oh these these calculations for Doc Ock ooh that's too much power kaboom but MJ 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 you know yeah 
dude. Anyway, you know, he's, he, the man, you know, Otto is obsessed. He refuses to, to turn off the machine when the experiment is clearly going wrong. He even knocks away Spider-Man with the mechanical arms when Spider-Man tries to unplug it, you know, and, you know, once, once he wakes up and the, you know, the, the doctor's getting killed in Evil Dead homage, then, you know, he's like, did I miscalculate? And then the arms talk back to him and, no, I didn't miscalculate, I just need to do it again with more tritium. And, yeah, it just, it, it makes sense. And then he goes and robs a bank because he has to pay for equipment or something like that. And, yeah, you know, I don't, I can't think of any of his, his actions in the movie short of, you know, throwing a car that, you know, anyway. Pretty much all of his actions make sense. But yeah, throwing a car at the guy who he thinks just knows Spider-Man and he's like the one person who could help him find Spider-Man and the one girl that he's supposed to use as a hostage, that doesn't make him a whole lot of sense. But you know, his overall logic does you know, make sense. And with, with the train, with leaving Spider-Man on this speeding train, I guess he was just kind of hoping that, you know, whatever happened next, Spider-Man would be alive, but really exhausted, you know, whether he saved the train or just got away from it in time or whatever, that he'd be exhausted and easier to get back to Harry, something like that, you know, and that basically makes sense. And certainly it is a great heroic scene, you know, this is, this is why we pay, you know, for a ticket with, you know, the words Spider and Man hyphenated on it, you know, it's to see Spider-Man do this kind of th stuff, you know, fighting, you know, for one thing, fighting criminals, you know, low-level criminals. I love the scene where they, like, end up, you know, hanging from the, what, what is it, like a light, I don't know what that's called in English, but, yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, for, first he stops the, the car, I th it's, it might be one of the cop cars, you know, the, the cop cars get, like, shot, and one of them is just, flying over and gonna hit all these people and they're like, oh, they can't die, you know, and then the car just suddenly stops and it's like, what, what's happened? And it's a way of, go Spider-Man, you know, and, I mean, she's screaming it, we're screaming it, and, you know, he just goes, you know, gets the criminal show. Anyway, that's one thing we want to see him do. Another is fighting villains and a third is definitely doing these big heroic things. You know, if Spider-Man had not been on that train, I don't know, dozens of people would have died from that, you know, everyone on the train, and heck, it might have hit people when it fell down, you know, so it's, yeah, nice big, and, and it's, it's just a great scene from start to finish, you know. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot. I really appreciate that this film has Peter telling May that he could have saved Uncle Ben. I, I'm not blaming the first movie for not being in that because I think it is the kind of thing that you really want to have, you know, later. It, it's, it's the kind of thing you put in a sequel, you know, and her reaction and then later how, you know, you know what, it's, I understand. It's, I, I, we don't need to talk anymore about that. I love you. You know, that whole thing is just, it's perfect. Both of them play it perfectly, and it's just the right thing to have in this, you know, kind of thing to, to have, because that is, you know, Spider-Man and Peter Parker, it is this tragedy, and he can't save everyone, even the people he loves, and you know, with Uncle Ben, he, yeah, it was even, yeah, he, he feels really guilty, and people who watched the first movie can understand why, or read the comics. Again, I'm not spoiling the first movie in this video. Yes, I do believe that covers it. Actually, I just have to ask. I'm not gonna be spending time talking about
about the supposed comedy. You know, I did. I, I, I limited to saying that it's not for me. I really don't find it funny. But although I get that it, the, the elevator scene is a joke, I don't understand why Spider-Man doesn't take him up on it. You know, he's, he's talking about, oh, we can do these products for you. Peter Parker is in need of money. So's Aunt May. Why doesn't he say, you know what? I will get back to you on that. You know, I just, I don't really see it. It, it wouldn't really go against his, you know, I mean, it's not like he'd be, he'd be doing it instead of being a hero. That's not what the guy is saying, because the guy is, you know, kind of telling him, you know, I like what you do. Well, I guess he's more talking about the image, but still, you know, he, he wouldn't have to give up being a hero, you know. I do like that, the, the, that they do have that one line referencing the comics with, you know, you could do TV appearances, you know, because that's how he starts out in the comics. He doesn't go directly to being a hero, do not pass go, do not collect $200. He, you know, he starts out doing cool tricks in front of television cameras to make money. So, yeah, that was... And I believe that covers it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.